Hi, and Happy New Year. My name's Leo, and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. Back in 2017, I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing yacht for the price of $1. And since then, I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. So right now, I'm back in the UK, getting a new US visa and seeing family. Uh, and this bonus New Year's video is all about uh, the brand new diesel tanks for Tally Ho. Uh, and the adventure that I had on Christmas Day going up to collect them. Uh, but before I set out on that adventure, I had a bit of an update about the previous leaky plastic tanks. Now I do have a little bit of an update regarding the plastic diesel tanks uh, which I ordered and they were delivered here and they leaked and were defective and uh, just in general really really bad build quality. Uh, the company that built them uh, told me that if I shipped them back to them they would return my deposit uh, which I thought seemed pretty fair. I did ship the tanks back to them, uh, they did uh, organise and pay for the shipping uh, but then they refused to return the deposit so um, I'm a thousand dollars down on uh, that experience um, not to mention the uh, six or eight months or more of wasted time uh, which is frustrating I do understand why they wouldn't want to pay the deposit back they've obviously lost money on these tanks but also don't think it's fair for them to be making defective products and labeling them as marine quality when they're very clearly not to be honest, the only thing that really frustrated me is that they told me very clearly that they would return my deposit. I mean, if they hadn't said that, I wouldn't really expect them to, and I would have shipped them back the tanks anyway. But the fact that they told me very clearly that if I gave them the tanks back, they'd return the deposit um, and then refused to and then stopped answering my emails uh, is just a really a pretty crappy thing to do, I think. And anyway, I've debated with myself a lot about whether I should uh, name and shame this company. Uh, and although I'd really like to, uh, it's just not my style. Um, I think it would be unfair for me to do something which could really, really uh, impact a small business when it's just one person's experience. So all I will say is if you are looking to buy custom plastic welder tanks in the US, just be very, very careful about what your expectations are. Ideally see some examples of the work in person before you order anything even if, or maybe especially if, the company says that they've been doing it for a very long time. Well, it's Christmas morning, quite early, and I'm on the ferry uh, from Port Townsend to Coopville, and then I'm gonna drive up to Bellingham and pick up the best Christmas present I could possibly ask for, Talio's new diesel tanks. So after I released the video about the plastic tank disaster, um, I got a, a few offers uh, of help, uh, which is really kind. And one of those people uh, was a guy called Lauren, who works at All American Marine up in Bellingham and uh, he said he could make me some new tanks. Um, obviously, I was really excited about that. We started a conversation. Um, the company he works for makes big power boats. Um, Lauren is a metal worker, and he was offering to uh, make the tanks in his spare time. I would pay for the materials and any expenses, and uh, All American Marine uh, would allow uh, him to use their workshop to do this work. That was obviously an incredibly kind offer, and of course, I jumped at it. Um, and I was able to redesign the diesel tanks uh, to actually fit the space a bit better and also be simpler to make, which was actually one advantage of having those plastic tanks come and see how they fit inside the boat. The tanks happened to be finished and ready just before Christmas, and so on Christmas morning I decided it would be a great day to uh, take a road trip, a bit of an adventure, get the ferry over and drive up to Bellingham to pick up the tanks and bring them back down to Port Townsend.
dude. Hey, dude. Good to meet you. Good to meet you too. How you doing? Sorry about the camera. <laughs> Uh, well, my name is Lauren. I'm a boat builder, but I'm not a sailor. Um, I build aluminum uh, catamarans for a living. Been doing that for 10 years. I've been watching Leo on YouTube for quite a while. I saw the diesel tank disaster video, and at the end of it, he was kind of looking for options, and I've built aluminum tanks here. You know, to my knowledge, we've never had an issue, so I kind of volunteered to build some aluminum tanks for him. These tanks go into a sailboat where almost nothing is level and absolutely nothing was square on them. So it was a little bit of a, a challenge. I was able to figure it out and kind of learn something in the process. The construction is quarter inch, quarter inch aluminum plate, uh, welded double continuous uh, inside and out with the exception of the lid. That one's welded single side because that was my the last piece to put on. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about different diesel tank materials and why I chose to go with aluminium and if you want to skip ahead past all that you can just skip to this time. Otherwise, starting with the previous tanks which didn't work, I decided originally to go with welded plastic tanks because uh, plastic doesn't corrode um, and all metals eventually, one way or another, can corrode. I do still think that welded plastic tanks could be a good option if they're well made. Uh, but after my experience, I really wanted to go with something that was just solid and reliable um, and had been tried and tested because one of the problems with plastic tanks is uh, there's not a lot of experience with using them for diesel for a long period of time. We don't know if in 20 or 30 years how they'll be holding up. And there seems to be a mixed opinions on whether plastic can become permeable uh, or degrade with diesel inside. Fiberglass tanks could be another good option, but uh, one thing that fiberglass tanks and plastic tanks do have in common uh, is that the material is a lot softer than the metal fittings which will go into the ports and so that can cause a problem uh, with the threads getting damaged and so on. If I did have a fiberglass tank I wouldn't want to have a drain port at the very bottom uh, or the ports would have to be at the top of the tank because obviously if they fail it's a lot less disastrous than if a port at the very bottom of the tank fails. A lot of people suggested using some kind of flexible bladder or a bag or a bag inside a tank, uh, like the sort of thing that they do on aircraft. Uh, now, I know it works well on aircraft, but in my opinion, it's not suitable for uh, a sailing boat like this, especially in my particular application, the uh, service interval or the maintenance interval is too long. It's too difficult to get to these tanks uh, to inspect them. Uh, and I think there's too much opportunity for chafe, especially with the movement of a sailing boat. And putting a bag inside a box, in my opinion, just adds a lot of extra complexity and a lot more things that could possibly go wrong. Now, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here, uh, just getting a simple diesel tank for a sailing boat should be and is a simple thing. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure I'm using the best material for my particular application. So having decided that I definitely wanted metal tanks, I quickly ruled out the more exotic metals such as monel and titanium, because although they're very, very corrosion resistant, uh, they're very expensive materials and it's really hard to find people uh, with experience working with them. Also materials like that which are very resistant to electrolytic uh, corrosion uh, can actually cause problems because say you, you screw in a stainless or a brass fitting into a manel tank because the manel is so noble and so much bigger than the fitting as well, the fitting which you've put into it will probably suffer from corrosion issues. So at this point the choice is narrowed down to stainless steel, mild steel or aluminium. 
Now, mild steel is a very predictable material. It does corrode, everyone knows it corrodes, but it corrodes uh, in a predictable way. It corrodes in a very visible way. And if it's taken care of and painted with a good epoxy paint on the outside, uh, it can last for many decades. Like anything, they've got to be installed well and maintained well, uh, but I think steel tanks are a really good option. The disadvantage is that you've got to coat them really well on the outside, um, and if any bits get scratched off or the coating isn't as good as it should be, uh, then you can have real problems. And you pretty much know that whatever you do, steel tanks will eventually corrode because they're in such a saline environment. The other two choices are stainless steel and aluminium. Uh, which are both supposed to be fairly inert metals, but both of which can suffer from crevice corrosion, um, especially in a deoxygenated environment. And what that means is that both of them rely in one way or another on oxygen being present to actually not corrode. And that becomes a problem when there's a place where water can sit on the tank. So if you have standing water that doesn't move, uh, eventually that water will become deoxygenated um, and then the, the metal underneath it or touching it uh, can start with usually with crevice corrosion uh, which is small pinpoints of corrosion that will happen along welds or seams um, and then slowly spread. This can happen on the outside of tanks but it's also very common on the inside at the very bottom of the tank because uh, any water in the diesel uh, will sink to the bottom of the tank and form a kind of sludge uh, with biomaterials from the diesel as well uh, and if that isn't drained out then that sludgy uh, liquid at the bottom of the tank will become deoxygenated and crevice corrosion can start there at the very bottom of the tank which is of course the worst place for it because when it breaks through the tank you could spill your entire tank of diesel into the bilge which would be a huge disaster. Now interestingly for some reason stainless steel is considered a reasonable diesel tank building material in Europe um, and it's quite common there to see that but in the United States uh, where I needed to get my tanks built uh, stainless steel is not considered suitable for fuel. Um, and it says quite clearly uh, in the regulations that you can't use it. I'm not sure exactly why that is. I'm sure someone here will be able to tell me, but it simplified my decision-making because uh, now I'm limited to either mild steel or aluminium. And eventually I decided to go with aluminium, uh, mostly because it's a little bit lighter than steel, even though the tank will be a little bit thicker. Uh, and also because it seems that with an aluminium tank, if it's installed well, um, with consideration and designed well so that there's nowhere that water can sit and deoxygenate, then it should be able to last forever, really. As long as it's getting good ventilation, good airflow, and it's not got any standing water or deoxygenated areas, there's no reason why it should corrode. Of course, being in a boat with a lot of bronze, it's critical to make sure there's no electrolytic pathway between the bronze and the aluminium, uh, because that would make the aluminium corrode. But it was relatively easy to design a tank which could never come into contact with the copper or the bronze uh, and which doesn't have anywhere for water to sit and pool uh, and which has a drain plug right at the very bottom so you can uh, drain any sludge or water out of the inside of the tank as well. So there we go, that was the decision-making process condensed into just a couple of minutes. Hope it wasn't too boring. Essentially, diesel tank is a diesel tank. It doesn't have to be complicated. But as always, I'm trying to understand all the different options as well as I can so I can make a, a, an intelligent, informed decision uh, for the best material in this particular application uh, and so I can learn something myself and um, hopefully it's uh, somewhat interesting to a few of you out there at least. Now, if you are looking for some tanks yourself, uh, I don't think all American Marine normally do small custom tank jobs like this. This was a bit of a one-off for them, uh, but the guys that made my water tanks out of stainless steel are called Patriot Marine in New Jersey. And they ship all over, um, and I highly, highly recommend them. They did a beautiful job on my stainless steel water tanks, but their main work is aluminum tanks, and they do really good work. They're really quick, really good communication, really reasonably priced. Um, so if you're looking for custom tanks yourself, really recommend them and I'll put their contact details in the description below the video.
Well, I hope it goes without saying that I am incredibly grateful to Lauren for building these tanks um, and the tanks themselves are phenomenal. The metal workers around here that I've shown these tanks to have all been really, really impressed as well. So thank you, Lauren, uh, for doing a fantastic job. I'd also like to thank All American Marine, the company that Lauren works for. They allowed Lauren to do this project uh, in the shop and sold me the materials for it. Once I actually get the tanks into the boat, uh, you'll see much more clearly how the brackets mount the tanks and uh, I'll explain what all the ports do and so on. Uh, you can see though, this one's upside down. At the very top, which will be the very bottom, there's a drain port um, and that's really important. The tanks are made of quarter inch aluminum plate uh, of a marine grade, uh, so that's really nice and thick, it's strong, um, it's corrosion resistant. Uh, the material itself uh, isn't cheap, uh, the material or the plate for these tanks costs just over three thousand uh, dollars, so it's a pretty decent chunk of money, uh, but when you consider the, the time and the, the expertise, the skill uh, that Lauren put into uh, putting his labour into these in the evenings and weekends, uh, I've got a screaming deal, uh, amazing value for money, uh, phenomenal tanks, and uh, really really pleased so it was shortly after that that I had to leave the US and come back here to the UK so those tanks are still sitting underneath Tally Ho ready to go in the boat and hopefully that will happen shortly after I get back now I'm really pleased with how things turned out if it hadn't been for the disaster with the plastic tanks I never would have got in touch with Lauren so once again something that seemed like it was a real disaster turned out to actually be the best thing that could possibly happen to this project so apart from the thousand dollar deposit that I lost and to be fair, I did learn some lessons from that. Uh, I'm very pleased with how everything has turned out. So thanks a lot for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference and it means that we're able to keep on doing this work and I'm able to keep on making and editing these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.